Good evening, everybody. And good afternoon. And good morning. <laughs> yeah. And welcome to the concluding talk in the Kaduri Earth Program series for 2022, entitled Cooking the Message. You are joining us from no fewer than 22 countries and regions from around the world. And I'm going to read to you um, the list of those countries. Thank you. Hong Kong, of course. Macau, China, mainland China, Taiwan, the Philippines, Japan, Vietnam, India, Singapore, Thailand, USA, UK, Switzerland, Mexico, Kenya, the Netherlands, Denmark, Germany, Canada, France, Australia, and Brazil. I'm not sure we've ever had such a global audience before on our Kaduri Earth Program talk, but wherever you are in the world, a very, very warm welcome to you. My name is Andrew McCauley. I'm uh, actually the chair of the board of Kaduri Farm and Botanic Garden, and I'm very delighted and honored to be the facilitator uh, for tonight's talk, and I'm delighted and honored to welcome our speaker, John Quano from New Guinea. I'm going to say a little bit about John uh, in a minute, uh, but first I want to give you some uh, technical information. So uh, the talk will be for about 35 minutes, and um, it might begin with a, a short video that, that John plans to show. Uh, after that, we'll have plenty of time for question and answers. So uh, you might want to take the opportunity during the talk to make some notes uh, about what kind of uh, questions you might like to ask. We're also accepting questions in Chinese. So the questions will be put into the chat box and you can write in uh, Chinese, and that will be translated. We're very fortunate, in fact, to have uh, translators for both Putonghua and uh, Cantonese tonight. So thank you uh, to those translators. And so to hear a simultaneous translation of the talk, you can go to the interpretation box at the bottom and um, click on the language that you would like to hear in. You can also choose to mute uh, John so that you can just hear purely the language or not uh, as you please. I would like to invite you to uh, uh, leave your camera on if you would like, and then that way uh, John can see who's here and, and we can have a more intimate gathering. Um, you can switch between speaker view or gallery view if you want to focus on the speaker or see who else is present um, by clicking on the view icon at the top right. Uh, I do want to let you know that the talk is going to be recorded and will be shared on social media later. If you have any technical problems, if there's anything that I haven't covered, then please feel free to send a message to the host and they will address your concerns. We have, uh, I'm very happy to see John there with a, with a good connection, but we have been having problems with the connection earlier today. So 
Um, just want to warn you that there is the possibility of hiccups there. So once again, a very, very warm welcome to John Quano. Uh, I think it's a great honor for uh, Kuduri Farm to welcome him back. And this is because he is an elder uh, from one of the uh, tribes in New Guinea that um, still have a strong connection to the traditional way of life. So they really have a lot to teach the modern world. John himself was uh, identified from birth as for the role, a special role of messenger. And, and maybe he will speak a bit about what that entails and, um, and how he became a messenger. So it's very appropriate that our title is Cooking the Message. John has visited Kaduri Farm in person uh, six times as a teacher. And we had hoped that he would come in 2020. And actually, the retreat that we had designed for 2020 was Cooking the Message. Um, and that is because in the previous year, um, during a retreat titled Waking the Mother, he had spoken at the end, uh, after we'd spent time in the forest, about the need to cook the messages that we receive from nature. So we were all very intrigued as to what this entails. And we've been waiting now three years <laughs> to find out. <laughs> so I will now hand you over to John. Welcome, John. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. Greetings to all of you, all friends, or fellow human beings, wherever you are. I want to say thank you from New Guinea Island. New Guinea Island, everyone know, I think, uh, just north of Australia. Um, I'm from a Wallach tribe and the highlands of New Guinea. Western uh, New Guinea, or West Papua. On the eastern side is Papua New Guinea, and the western side is West Papua. Thank you for all of you joining this talk. I deeply appreciate for your presence. First of all, I want to acknowledge, yes, all of us believe, know that all other beings, our ancestors, who made us, bring us to this level, to this place, to this time, we appreciate them. I want to acknowledge all of them. They are, they are present and they, they do exist and they do present in this time. Um, secondly, I want to acknowledge the Kaduri families uh, who have passed away and who are still alive. They do exist and they do present here. Yeah. I appreciate for what they have done, what they have started and what they, we are continuing uh, from what they have started. So we appreciate them. I also acknowledge you are you do exist, everyone in on this screen, and your friends and your families, and we do exist and we do present at this place. And uh, I welcome every one of you and thank you for listening and pre, um, spending your time and uh, uh, opportunity to come here. I do appreciate. I hope that the uh, <clears throat> message that I bring now will uh, benefit uh, contribute a little bit into our lives. As, a, as, a, as an individual or as a group, as a family or as a colleagues in the office or wherever we are. I hope that this will bring something to, into our lives. Uh, as Andrew mentioned, cooking a message is very important for Melanesian people, cooking a message. This is why in, in Melanesia, when you come to Melanesia, you will see everyone is almost quiet. No one is talking almost. Um, they choose not to talk a lot. Uh, to stay quiet because they want the cooking process to happen. Um, so that's uh, something that I want to highlight. <clears throat> in Melanesia, when you come here, it's like nothing is moving, nothing is happening, nothing is talking. Yes, but everything is quiet because they, they every message is coming and going, uh, even from anything and anyone, and or from things happening and in the in the mind, on the heart, on the body, in the ears. They want to listen. And this is why we, we, we actually slowly, slow in 
in uh, action um, <laughs> because we tend to cook messages. Um, <clears throat> this is also why maybe you call this one in the Pacific region, it's a passive, but actually people are listening and cooking something. And maybe this is why I think, I hope that you will get something out of this talk. You will get some messages out of this talk. As one thing I want to point out before I continue is that cooking a message is not like a discussion. It's not like a, in a classroom, teacher speaking and students, no. Cooking a message is almost one way because only the elders will be talking and then the, the rest of the people just listening because they, they are doing something in the mind and in the, in the ears, listening to the ears and staying, staying quiet and stay and stay. Yes, in their action, you will see they are doing the action, but not, not out of talking. They just listen and listen and listen, and then they will act. So it's a bit different in a modern context. When you process something, you need to, you need to hear someone talking back. When you send a WhatsApp message, you expect that person to reply. Uh, you invoke someone, you need to expect someone to reply back. In Melanesia, you, you don't see this a, a lot. You don't get the reply all, some, most of the time because they, they process it. They, they act on it. So that's something uh, different um, between Melanesia and uh, modern, modern context. And as I want to highlight a message requires action, no conclusion in modern uh, context. Yeah, when in modern classroom or modern talks, you need to conclude something. You need to make a decision. You need to make a choice. In Godrich society, you don't make the choice. You don't decide anything. You just talk and talk and talk and talk and and leave it. Leave the, everyone listening to process it by themselves. That's something that are uh, very different in a modern and, and a Malaysian way. Another one, discussing a message, a message include, might include all and everyone. But in Melanesia, only one person will, will cook the message and, and everyone else is just listening and, 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 and enjoying. Um, another aspect I want to highlight, uh, types of messages. We have so many types of messages and uh, sources of messages. We have two major types. One, one type is quick response message. Something you get, you need to respond. No need to cook. You need to respond. Uh, we have lots of stories uh, either in a, in a, in a uh, um, Bible or in, a, in our old stories. When they dream at night, they do it in the morning. This is not, uh, it doesn't require uh, cooking. But some stories, like in the traditional societies, when you go to a men's house in particular or mother's house, always you hear from the early evening until nightfall, until children go sleep, everyone will talk about stories and stories and stories. And they will talk about the same stories repeatedly. When I'm now already adult and already old man, but when I go to men's house, the same story being told, they're talking the same stories. Why? You will, you will know why later. So this is, uh, we follow the storylines, storyline, follow the story by story, story like cooking the message based on storylines. And there are also cooking the message based on only stories, just stories like this yesterday, something happened yesterday, something happened some years ago. Maybe I came to Hong Kong and I gave a speech. This kind of stories. When I, I present the stories, they will process, they will process the story and they will cook it. But other stories, the storylines, it's, it's like, where, I do, where do I come from? Which mountain I relate to? Why this mountain came up? Why did the valley happen? Why is this river came out on this mountain and ended up on that direction? This uh, story of creation, story of events in the past, these are the storylines, we call it storylines. This relate to everyone, every clan, every tribe, every person even. Even when I was born, what animal came out? As Andrew mentioned, it was a bat. Bat is animal that normally bring messages to human beings. So when I was born or before I was born or during my time of birth, 
there was bats surrounding the house. So they knew that this child is a messenger. So this kind of We also have stories from messages coming from uh, animals, or pigs, for example, plants, or flowers. Even, um, even we can we can pick up messages from uh, smell. We feel we feel like now I'm talking, and you might feel something, and in in your body you, you might feel some feelings, <coughs> some emotions, or you might feel some smell in the in the room. This will these are messages that. Uh, normally, nature sends to our our body that we need to really pick up and cook it, process it. And one example is um, when I want to go to another village. When I, I'm walking, I'm walking to other village, and on the path, on the way I'm going, there is a snake laying, uh, crossing the the river, uh, the, the 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 road. I will turn back. I will not continue. Another uh, message, for example, when I wanted to, to go out and some uh, some destination or wanted to do something in my mind, when I step over and I fall down or some I kick some stones, it really means I need I don't need to go. I need to stay. I, I cannot go out. Or when I step out and rain falls, that also means I, I cannot go. This kind of kind of messages that we normally get from from spirits, from plants, from animals, even from our own feelings, from our, our own smell, from our own taste, or we feel on our, our, our skin, even on the weather, what happens on the weather, we always watch everything. There are also messages from gestures. When you, you visit me, for example, I have gestures that giving you message that you need to notice. Otherwise, you get you can get into trouble, for example. The way I eat, I eat food or the way I greet you, all, everything, we read everything. Or the way I sit down, I sit, the way I sit down when you come in also might send some messages. Um, I think, Andrew, you already experienced when you, you come into, a village, you come into a village, <clears throat> you will you will have some people standing by on, on the village and they welcome you and they cry. They will cry when you arrive. So one, one very important um, <clears throat> aspect in Melanesia is whenever you come, they will always cry for you. It's not because they are sad, but because they're happy. Even old people, young people, mothers and fathers, they will all cry. Um, <clears throat> some cultures regard crying as weakness, sign of weakness. But no, Melanesia is crying is a sign of strength. You you have a heart. You have a heart for other people. You have when you have a heart, you you are man. You are you are human being. That's why you need to. When someone comes, you need to accept with the heart. This is why we all uh, uh, we cry. And in the cry, there is a song. Um, lamenting songs or cry songs. We normally cry songs. And then the cry, we, 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 can sell, we can send messages by the, the songs. And it can happen. When I cry, I sell someone, a guest coming to run away from coming. I can do that. Other people can suddenly turn back and run away because I'm sending the message from my song, my, my crying. Or <clears throat> if the song needs a reply from the other party, they will reply the song. They cry. Um, also, from singing, normal singing, singing. Uh, when someone sings a song, people always listen to the songs, and they will pick up the messages in the songs. Sometimes they will repeat old songs, but some most of the time they will create new songs in that place, in that event. And they ordinary people will just think they are singing, but some people certain people will pick up the messages and they will respond. They will react to that message.
Another source of message, I have mentioned one is by song, one is by story, another one is by storyline, story of creation, story of distribution, where we come from, all this. Another one is the story from nature, when you see the snake on the road or all this, when you see, feel the smell or feel the taste or feel the skin, you feel cold suddenly. It means something, something is happening. But in Melanesia, sometimes, most of the time we feel hot. Hot because we say many spirits are in here. When many spirits coming in, we feel hot in the room. So now another source of dream is vision. Uh, source of uh, messages from dream, dream and vision. So Melanesian people are very, very, very uh, uh, interested and very focused on dreams. So when early morning you get up, elders will always ask you, do you have any dreams? Anything, anything at all? So they will always ask dreams or visions. And visions sometimes when, for example, when I'm talking like this, someone might get, fall asleep and he might have some visions. That's normal practice in Melanesia. Because in a man's house, everyone is settled and sitting and anyone can lay down, anyone can sit. It's free for everyone to do whatever they, they feel they want, the body tells them to do. So sometimes when people are talking, they fall, another elder will fall asleep. And then when they wake up, they know some message is coming. So they say, oh, say the message, please. So the elders will get up and say, oh, yeah, I saw this. Someone is coming. On the on the crossing the river, maybe some young boys we need to go, something like this. So dreams and visions are very very important uh, in Melanesia until today. Even me myself, I feel I always use dreams and visions. And when you read uh, stories, histories in the past, they use the dreams and vision a lot. I don't know now. Maybe when you have a dreams and visions, you go to other people to interpret. No, actually, you don't need. You can interpret yourself. You can cook yourself. So now I want to talk about how, how we actually cook the message. How? So there are three types. I, I categorize into three types of messages. And <coughs> therefore, there are three, three types of cooking. Uh, I want to highlight that cooking a message in modern uh, modern food cooking, cooking a message is more like steaming. It's not like frying or boiling. If you're frying or boiling some uh, food, you can still have some water in the food and some fire in the food. But cooking a message is a process of steaming, steaming your food, steaming the message for you. So when you get it, the essence only. It's not the whole, the whole. Now, first of all, is the cooking a, mess, a message in a story. So I have mentioned a little bit, but I will repeat. I will repeat, um, cooking a story, is elder will tell a story, any story at all, he want to pick up. Maybe he will refer to recent events and also he tell, refer, refer to all stories. He will always tell a stories, tell a stories repeatedly, as I mentioned before. And then um, listeners, young people, or maybe newcomers, or they will pick up the messages inside the, those stories. So they, they, the method they do is telling it repeatedly. It's more like a, a modern time advert advertisement. People advertise the same phrase, the same statements, the same picture repeatedly. And that's, I, when I see it, I see, that's the method we have been using in the past. So in the men's house or in the mother's house, we always tell the same stories so that it comes part of the system of the mind and reaction. When it comes part of you, you can respond to it uh, most often based on according to the stories because you know the answers to, this, to the incident happening because of you know the stories. Um, another one is cooking a uh, message in a dream a vision if the message is coming from a dream and visions then you need to ask the dreamer or the, the, the person who had the vision you can ask him ask him well what is the dream what is the vision and he can explain it and explain 
and then you ask him what do you think about it what do you what do you what is the message for you for the dreamer himself and then the elders or other people or the family members or maybe in the past his father has a similar dream or something happened we relate to old stories and new stories and uh, related stories all this and then they will finally make a decision or come up with a conclusion as i mentioned before conclusion is not coming into the words oh therefore we should do this no no it, that, it never happens conclusion come out from the actions of everyone listening so everyone will interpret uh, and implement it straight away in their in their lives so that's the cooking of the dreams people can interpret people also can ask their friends um, i'm a bit feel um yeah many people are not interpreting dreams anymore uh, right now because we have a lot of dreams but we don't see it's uh, meaningful uh, it's a, a waste of our uh, messages we are wasting messages coming every day in our lives or also from plants from animals um from anything coming in also we are we are wasting a lot of messages coming into our lives and next one is the cooking messages from other beings as andrew mentioned we went to the farm and then went to the bush and then the message is coming out so so to cook a message from a, uh, another being or spirit or particularly animals and plants you need to really feel the connection between that object or that subject and use yourself and then you it will speak to you appreciate that object or subject and see it look it and see the function what it is doing what that animal is doing to the to your life or to a, a, a own life and then we can really see the, the we can really read um <clears throat> i think many uh, plants or environmentalists many who love animals and many who love plants they actually get a lot of messages from these uh, beings but we are we get messages from where i do we get messages from facebook uh, whatsapp and youtube and uh, cnn and all these huh? we have we have messages from other, other other places actually we have a lot more useful beneficial messages coming from these other beings because they are collectively responding to uh, some things happening in this life all together so when messages coming to other coming from other beings we need to actually look at it sit down watch and really have a dialogue with that being maybe that is a lizard maybe that a butterfly maybe that's a, just a leaf you need to sit down and ask questions inside they will speak to you we have done this many many times they will always speak to you i think we call them living being they are not dead they are living being like just like us but they, they have different language so we don't understand just like now i'm human you're human if i speak in my language you won't understand same same exactly the same so animal plants they do talk they do speak they do send messages but it is on their language so we humans we need to respond we need to understand language is by how how to understand now how to listen to how to listen to the messages why we need to cook we need to cook messages because we need to take the essence because <clears throat> now i'm going wider to the messages we are receiving in the modern life now we need to even when we get messages from cnn or youtube or facebook we also need to cook it because in the traditional society in the new guinea in melanesia we cook the messages because we know that there are some embedded messages there are some additional issues there are some modified messages when storyteller even tell the stories he will modify something not not because he wants to lie but he want to hide something something very important or something so there are always modification uh, hiding and all this so even in the messages we are receiving in the modern time there are some embedded messages there are some intended outcome so cooking the message is so that we can get the essence so there are also messages for there are messages for individuals like you and i as a person 
There are also messages for groups in, uh, as a family or as a, as, a, as a country. There are messages that require you to cook for some time. There are also messages that you need to uh, respond quickly because otherwise you, are, you will be late. Another thing I want to uh, highlight um, <clears throat> is that all the time in this life, everything is really, really sending a message. We call it that everything is dancing. And in the dance, every person is, every person, every being is, is, is also dancing. And we need to deliberately pay attention in this dancing so that we can pick up the melody. We can pick up the dance and we can join. Otherwise, we are out of the dance. We will be out. We will become um, dumped people. So we need to really dance with the, with the dance. We need to appreciate the reality. Another aspect I want to emphasize in this talk is that we need to appreciate the reality that other than humans beings, <coughs> excuse me, other than human beings do send messages all the time. Do, they do send messages all the time. Send to who? Send to themselves and send to us as well as humans. And we don't, we don't understand this. We need to learn to read messages from other beings, from how spirit talks. Spirit talks to your heart. If you listen to spirit, you need to your heart. Not reasons, but what you, how you feel, feel in the heart is the spirit talking. And you can also listen to Plants, as I mentioned before, uh, snakes, listen to snakes talking, listen to birds talking, listen to like bats. Bat is a, a very important messenger in, in Melanesian culture. And also cica, cicado, cicada, cicada, yeah? that makes noises in the, in the afternoon. When it makes noises in the morning time, it's a danger, this kind of thing. Yeah? So this kind of sign and, and noise and, and animals talking, we need to really now start to start to appreciate that they are talking. Now we are facing a lot of problems in this modern life. Do you think they are, they are not doing anything? No, they are saying something to us. Do this, do that, do this way, do that way. But we are the ones that not listening or not understand. So I hope we will be, we will be listening more and, and responding more. We, we will be listening to more and we, we, are not, we don't become reactive and responsive. Uh, but we need to cook it properly. And so the question now is who and what pass or what bring the messages to me? Is it from birds, from, uh, from beings, from stones, from rivers, from feeling, from smell, from what? From Facebook, from YouTube, from WhatsApp, from email? What is from on news, news agencies? What is, who is bringing the message to me? And the next question is, what does, who does the cooking? The messages, a lot of messages piling up in my life, the modern society. So who does the cooking? In the, in the traditional society, I mentioned only one person cooking and the other person is just sitting and sitting there and, and scale something and listen and try to figure out what to do in, the, in their lives. But what is happening in this life? People in Hong Kong, in England, in the USA, in Australia, you, you are living in modern times, so you, everything is timetabled and everything is time. So who is actually cooking the message for your life? And another one, last one is, how do you respond to those messages coming to you? Is also another, do you depend on the politicians to tell you what to do? Or you, do you have your own mind or not? This is a question I always ask in modern societies because they tend to, they tend to listen, trust anyone, uh, the liars. Or the, uh, I tell you, I tell you to jump into the hole. You can jump just easily because politician. I'm the politician. So uh, right now we need to go back to our own being and our own self to become our own as human. Bring everything. Last message I want to tell you now. Uh, to express is that we need to bring everything to the heart. Then that's the place where, where we normally 
messages are cooked. Why messenger in the traditional society, only one person doing the cooking and the others just lay down because everything must go down to the heart. This is why. Now, modern people try to bring everything, message to the heart, not just in the mind, not just in the counting in numbers, not just in the um, uh, uh, lab results, not just in the scientific uh, outcome, no, but to the, your heart, your own heart. It's the best one, the best tool. It's the, uh, the place where um, the steaming of the message happened is in the heart. Um, I also want to mention uh, three methods that I have found so far in the modern societies that is useful for us to, to, to see. Number one is the breath work. Breath work is a practice that Andrew and I have learned some years ago and we are teaching and it helps people to go to the heart because it doesn't, it loosen up the mind and then bring people to the heart. It really helpful for modern society right now uh, so that we learn everything goes to the heart. Another one, second one is uh, vigil. Vigil is also another practice we normally do in the traditional society. Maybe when they're hunting, maybe when they are doing, when they are fasting, uh, and the elders will go to the bush. They go off to the bush and they stay there and they eat anything they, available in the forest. Or sometimes they bring their own food. Sometimes they don't bring, bring anything. So they, and they, they pick up anything, any messages coming out during the, this vigil, anyone, anything. No, nobody else, only themselves will go there. If they do it, 10 people, 10 elders, 20 elders, they go separate, everyone separate. And then they will go on vigil and they will pick up messages. And after they, they sometime later, when they want to come back, they go come back to their house and they tell them, they tell the messages. And another one, last one is that you do the meditation. I think people in Asia are popular for meditation. I think you need to, we need to uh, practice it more and more meditation. That's uh, things that I want to say for the cooking the message. Uh, another additional thing that I want to mention is that, yes, we have the process, we have the type of message, but also we, have, we need to create a spacious place for us to, to cook the message because modern society, we are crowded with messages coming into the mobile phones, coming into the uh, laptops. So we need outside of this, we need as human beings, we need to create our own rooms. In the, in the, in the Melanesia, we have men's house, we call it. We have mother's house where all issues related to mothers are discussed in the mother's house and, and fathers also the same in the men's house. In modern time, we don't have it. So at least we need to create something where we can gather, we can join, we can share. Maybe we don't need to discuss, we don't need to argue, we don't need to make conclusions, but just tell them some stories. Just tell the stories. It's more like a psychologist, huh? Lay you down and you tell a story and you off you go. This kind of thing, but we need to do it ourselves. We don't need psychologists to help us. Um, we, another one I want to highlight is try not to find solutions because that will make you, your life hard and <clears throat> more complicated. Try to leave it and see what comes up next, what comes up next. And I think that's all what I want to say. And <clears throat> maybe we, last one, we played a video clip or so that we can see a little bit glimpse of messages coming and going in. Hello, can you see the video? Yes, yes. Can you hear the sound? No. Not the sound. Not yet, maybe. Um, the beginning of the video doesn't have a sound, so it should be normal. Yes, we are just driving in. You see the compound? There's a house, one compound, one family. Oh, hi. 
This is an elder called Usangodeg. Usangodeg is a. <clears throat> we videoed it some days ago. The gate here, and turns. Go into direct to the door, the door of the house from this gate. The, on the other side is for pigs or for animals. And that gate straight into the house, we can see. Yeah. The rival chief of this village. <laughs> He's, a little, he's crying, but he's holding it. This is uh, his youngest sister looking after him. Not why. So we see when we're entering the gate. He's welcoming us. He's same greeting. Wah, wah, wah. <coughs> this should be kitchen style. Do, do, do. Picture looks up so very well. So you see everyone is going down, everyone must bow down and go in to Now we're entering the gate. I think that's all, huh? <clears throat> He's welcoming us. <coughs> that should be kitchen style. Do, do, do. <coughs> Picture looks up so very well. Okay, so um, thank you, John, for that beautiful talk, and really a lot, um, a lot in there to digest and and reflect on. And you brought me back to my uh, visit to the village. What? What? What?
Wah, wah, wah. Uh, wah is a greeting. It means many things, but I remember most especially the crying. Yes. And how, and I couldn't, automatically I was crying. And it pulls you into the heart. It pulls you into the heart. So it really struck me what, in our modern world, it takes a lot for people to get into the heart. We do a lot of practices. We have a lot of psychologies. But in your place, you just start that way. Before you even speak, you go into the heart. And it's just the most impressive uh, thing. So anyway, I'm sure there are lots of questions. So I do invite uh, everyone to uh, put questions into the chat box. And I will um, pick, pick out uh, questions and, um, and, and see which ones to ask uh, John. And once again, yeah, you can uh, write a, ch a question in, in Chinese, and we have translators on hand. So take your time and think about what you might want to ask. John? OK. So here's a message from Celine, uh, uh, not a message, a question, <laughs> but a question is also a message, right? <laughs> Hi, John, do you do regular meditation? Usually, how do you practice meditation? Uh, you need to unmute, John, yeah. <clears throat> yes, um, <laughs> mostly, Meditation in Melanesia is mostly going to the jungle, a type of vigil. We don't have like a, a Asian style, uh, low down all this. No, we don't have it at all. We normally just go to the bush and stay. Sometimes we just sit down and watch anything happening and what, and um, birds are moving and just close the mind and forgetting anyone else, just focusing on things happening on the on the place. I will say this is the Melanesian style more meditation because we, when you search, there is nothing because nothing is well organized, nothing is formulated, but everyone lives like they understand what is happening. And uh, <clears throat> mostly we will go to the bush, uh, separate, go away from, from other people and stay there and, and interacting to other beings. We, we, I will regard that as a meditation. Thank but in, in, I, meditation in uh, I, um, Asia, I know, I, I normally do it as well. Thank you. Thank you, John. Now, I see a lot of questions coming in. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, our team um, to uh, help me out. Josephine, if you can help pick out messages and you can WhatsApp them to me, and then that way I can focus um, on what uh, John is saying, but I'm going to look now and I see, um, can, so uh, here's a question. I would love to ask Elder John if he would share a story of a message he has cooked in his life or a story of someone else or a story of a group message cooked and how it unfolded. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I have two other elders still sitting with me, so <laughs> we are discussing. Um, one example just recently happened before I came here. I, I live in other, on the other side of the, country, the island in Port Mosby, but I'm right now in Wamena now. 
before I came here, they already, these two guys on the side with me, one, my elder brother, and uh, the other younger brother, they already got a message and <clears throat> on, the, on the vision. Mostly vision and dream will be, it's not really precisely 100%, but it can be 10%, 20%, 30%. You need, you need to interpret this, to interpret. So they, but the conclusion was, this elder is coming, the messenger is coming. So when they discussed, they, they have a dream different time, different places, and, but they came together to one point, my younger brother, they came to ask him, did you get any WhatsApp message or Facebook or text messages that he's coming over? <clears throat> and he said, no, nothing. But they said, yes, they, we already got it. We, we, we have the message. It's clear. We have discussed, we have booked, and it's clear that the messenger is coming. But they believed, some elders believed, because now you, now you know these Melanesian people also already messed up with uh, Facebook and WhatsApp and text messages already. So they are, they are based on uh, no messages on WhatsApp means nothing. But actually I arrived and now I'm with them. Two of them are with me now. <clears throat> this is one example. And um, another example, I think I told in the previous, um, previous time or not, Maybe I tell you what I have done so far. In the, in the <clears throat> another full circle retreat, I have um, the opening invocation I did. I did invocation very well and with uh, my younger brother sit down and we did very well, but the next hour, my voice went off. I couldn't speak anymore. So that actually means for me, I don't need to talk anymore. Maybe I have said over, <laughs> over the limit or I don't know why, but actually I couldn't speak anymore. So I stayed for some time, I stayed off, off the line and waited for my voice to recover. And Andrew asked me, will you be able to talk on Monday? I said, I will. I don't know yet if it will come back or not, but now I'm speaking. So I knew that, yes, I have said something that I, I should limit or limit something. Something like this, huh? this is a message coming to me. So maybe this is, these two are enough or yes yes thank you thank you for that um yes i i i was wondering about what happened during that retreat so um uh josephine from the farm is kindly um picking out messages for me but she's already picked out about 20 so, so i'm just gonna take it from the top here um from uh Gifty, thank you very much. May I know how you interpret dream? Do you have any suggestions for this? Yes. At first, at first, my practice, my personal practice, uh, I, Andrew and me always do it. I think, I hope you can re recall. When you have a dream, you need to ask the person, the dreamer, what do you think about it? Because that dream comes with the impressions already in the body or in the mind. <clears throat> so when you ask someone else who doesn't have, maybe he has knowledge and theory and all this, but he might be very separated from you. And maybe that's a very but distant, but you yourself need to wake up and this think and dream and think about what it means first. And then that clue in your mind and your heart will guide you to other interpretations. Uh, most people, they don't do that. They jump and ask, go to Google or ask this and ask that. And that will take you out from the real meaning. <clears throat> the real meaning already in, in your body system. Because they come with complete complete message to your body. So you, sh you should sit down and you should think first. Maybe meditate and do breath work, thinking about the dream, um, all these and then do vigil or all these activities. Uh, issue one is breath work, where when you do the breathing, maybe you need to think about the, the dream. It will, the best meaning for me as a, a dream is yourself. It's like you are, when you are sick, you can ask doctors, but you know best why you are sick. That's the same thing. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, John. And, um... Yeah, it strikes me that 
you've talked about breathwork and as you say you and i have taught breathwork in hong kong and one thing about uh, breathwork or any breathing practices is it pulls your awareness out of your mind and into your body and so when you step out of your mind then you can step yeah. into the heart because the heart is all around and so when you come into your body you come you become yes. present you come into your heart and as you're saying that the wisdom of the heart is where the answers lie um trusting yes. yourself um okay so here's another message uh from Doris, thank you very much for the talk. Could you elaborate a bit more on the experience when you receive a message from nature or spirits or plants or animals? Is it a feeling or a picture or a sound or a word in your mind? And do you have to prepare yourself before getting such messages? Yes. Yes, all you all you said is uh, the right one. Uh, maybe feeling, maybe uh, senses in the skin, or maybe sound. Sometimes sound come when you look at the picture. Uh, actually, you don't need to prepare your your yourself when you respect that being exists because it has a message, it has a role and function to play in this whole existence. Then you that being or that animal or plant feel that you appreciate and welcome and respect their existence so they're free to say what what they want what the message they have so i think the primary requirement is you respect them you appreciate and respect that they are equally have the rights and have the function and roles to play in this life and then they have something to say because they feel that we are equal no, we are the same we are the same being and then you will you will get sometimes it's more like a human talking to you thank you. thank you now this is a very interesting question from sandra can we outsiders become part of your community through mutual connection by cooking messages together Very, very. Uh, that's uh, that's one of the already the the Kadu Earth program is part of this. I think part of this how we do we do respect each other, how we appreciate each other, how we visit each other, not by destroying, it, exploiting it, not by using it, make use of it, but by respecting each other as we are. And this is why the, this kind of talk is coming. This is why Kaduri Earth program is coming. This is why we are we are <clears throat> we as human beings need to move upgrade our system of looking at each other, not as before our fathers grandfathers, and this uh, indigenous tribal and, and no no we don't see this anymore. We need to upgrade. We respect each other like we see in animals and plants. We see each other as different but human race. This is a step, some steps we are taking already. Because before, when you visit someone, you always try to avoid them. You always try to take photo and gag and show it in the. Um, we don't want to do that. We we want to rather as we are, and we move forward in our human history. So I think that's uh, that's in line with in our mind uh, with Earth, Kaduri Earth program and other programs. I think I agree. We will uh, we are heading to that direction. Thank you. Um, and here's a question from Dorothy. Uh, Hi, John. How do you see the importance of tribal living in modern urban life? Yes, I have. Uh, <clears throat> the importance of tribal life for urban living is, is <clears throat> Primarily treating each each other and treating each being according to their roles and functions. Yeah. That is uh, that missing in the modern context. That is why we need something. We need to train. We need to hear talks like this. We need to do other things. Um, some environmentalists or conservationists 
they love uh, uh, nature, they love animals, but they are not, they're treating it like I'm an expert, I know how to do it. They're doing like that. No, we, what we want to do is we put ourselves equal to them. They have a space, they have a role to play, they have a function to play. So this is uh, the direction I want uh, us all human beings to go. So tribal society count, count everything every being as, as living being. Even stone, we respect them as a, as a living being. We cannot just um, dig a stone because I want a gold inside, no. Or we, can just, we cannot just make a dam because I, I want to uh, uh, water the party field. We don't do that. We always go to the, to the river and um, so do some ceremonies and ask if something happened to me or something coming to my house, I, can, I should stop it. <laughs> So tribal living doesn't mean we totally disagree with what is happening in the modern time. No, it means we bring back human way of thinking and behaving into original setting as humans, as part of nature or as nature ourselves. That's how the uh, <clears throat> urban society to, to be closer to tribal or to society to when they go to urban condition we need to pay attention to this thank you so here's a question from uh danning i'm wondering if young people who have accepted modern education have obstacles to cooking the message is there any way to help them yes Yes, definitely they have. This is why we at this time now, right at this time now, we are rebuilding men's house. We are remapping the stories. That's what we are doing right now. I'm I'm right here in Wamana because we want to launch a customary law for my tribe, and we want to launch a storyline for my tribe. This is what's happening. So we will build a men's house. We will build mother's house. Yes, we have modern hotel like this. I'm in now with internet connection, but we also have outside in the village or even in the town, our own men's house, our own mother's house setting. So because message is cooked in the pan, right? In the, in the steam, uh, in the pan. So pan in Melanesian culture for cooking a message, mainly the men's house and mother's house, the house that is separated between men and women. Mothers stay with their children and, um, and then fathers stay with the young, young people. So this setting helped the cooking. So that, that's, a, that's why we, are, we realize already and we are already starting it, rebuilding it now. Thank you. And so here's a question from Hif. What do you feel is the best thing to do with people experiencing a lot of trauma? Um, when you go somewhere to be with someone and you feel a headache or you feel anxiety, is it enough to just be aware or do you use breathing or energy work to transform the space? Um, or do you listen for a message to decide what to do? Uh, because we don't, in modern context, we don't have the, the place for cooking the message. So <clears throat> the best thing so far is uh, do the breath, breathing, I, I will say, breathing in and out, as we Andrew and I normally do, uh, teach. Without stop, we just breathe in and out, in and out, any time, any, any length as you want. <clears throat> I think if you want to do, control it and and then it will complicate more but if you release it in through breathing it will release more <clears throat> that's how i experienced even andrew the witnessed uh, my release of the i i also experienced some stress some feeling when i go to jakarta when i go to indonesian places i feel stressed because i know these people are doing something in my place so i try to talk, uh, avoid and try to not to acknowledge i'm from west papua and all these all these complications but finally, I after breath work, I just said hello, good morning, how are you, and buy the coconut, what they are doing, what they are selling, and all this. 
and I'm now free going anywhere, everywhere in Indonesia, because I'm released from that bondage or uh, boundaries or pressure <clears throat> that I own, I myself, my mind. Thank Just you. Just by breath work. Uh, it... Thank you. And um, now here's an interesting question out, uh, from C.Y. Wong. Out of the countries you have traveled to share the message of your tribe, can you share with us the most interesting experience? Have you encountered any challenges and how did you cope with them? You could give a whole talk on this, yes. I'm sure. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I give this same answer, but I will not answer the same answer. I'm aware now that it's not good. It's not good on contact. You will not feel it good, but by the way, but my heart tells me tell it. So I will tell you. <laughs> So uh, I saw people uh, in Ireland when I was in Ireland. Yeah, I I must acknowledge Irish people are very similar to the Melanesian people. <laughs> I don't know how you see them, but that's how I see them. And once I once they they, they took me to a talk, and then <coughs> people would sit together around, and and they 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 were smoking, and they were giving passing one taking and giving to the other and giving to the other and giving to the other, passing around the cone and around the circle. And the same question were asked by a politician. Um, <clears throat> I was still ignorant a little bit at that time in Ireland and they asked me this question and I said, yes, I know. The best one is this one, when you smoke and pass around. <laughs> that the <clears throat> pass around other person until it come back to you. Because <clears throat> it's not like, uh, a plate and a, a food and you take your plate and you eat you finish it yourself it's not it's something that you share and that's uh, experience uh, that's that's the something we do in tribal people we don't have my individual personal plate <clears throat> for me to eat or for me to smoke or <clears throat> no we have our food we share everything almost except a, a husband and wife and some private things but almost everything is shared <clears throat> so in foreign countries this is the something very interesting now at this time i know now breathwork is very good and now um vigil is very good for modern people modern people already doing it meditation is very good i will add to that and uh, when you get it together like this, when you create a house, a house in the room, in the online and sit down and talk and talk, it's also good, good place for you to, for us to share because this modern culture doesn't provide that for, for human, our humanity. Thank you. Um, lots of messages here. Um, here's one. Uh, did you get a message from COVID-19 and how did you respond to that? Yes, we did. Absolutely. <laughs> but <laughs> I told Andrew, or I, yet or not, uh, we, we got the message and the message said COVID is not a disease. So we already put on YouTube and told the story that COVID is not a disease. It is a spirit or it is a poison being spread. And uh, uh, interestingly, no, not so many Melanesians are victims of COVID. In, even in West Papua, where I'm now, almost no single person I know, they have got COVID-19 at all. Even though most of the time we don't have masks around. So we say COVID has an ears and eyes. And they are, because ears and eyes, they listen to wherever to go and they will go to the person they wanted to, they are ordered to go. They, they are not ordered to come to Melanesia. That's what we understand it. Maybe other diseases, yes, malaria or uh, COVID, uh, HIV, AIDS, maybe 
it's very clear they were ordered to come here, but COVID not not for us. So when you go all over Melanesia, even Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu, not everyone is wearing. Only when they want to go to store, big stores, they will find mask. Where is it? In the pocket or in the in bag? And then they put it on and go in. And then after the exit, they will put, take it off. Thank you. Thank you. Um... Okay, here's a question from Noel. Uh, thank you for the wonderful message. In many modern societies, there is trouble getting to the heart. I think this is because modern society can be so painful that many people don't go to the heart because it would unleash a lot of pain that people don't know how to cope with. So what is your advice for this? Um, when people don't know how to face the pain, they will shut the heart. Yes, <clears throat> that was why I mentioned that we need friends, trusted friends, trusted uh, people in the office or in the workplace or in the house or neighborhood. We need people like this. I think most problem now in the modern society is everyone is feel like on their own. And that isolate themselves or individuals from anyone else. So we need to really create spaces for socializing with each other and that's uh, for us it's a disease if you don't socialize it's a disease for those society because they are not socializing they are not they don't have friends next door neighbor or next door renting and, and the same building but they don't know each other they don't talk to each other they don't know the names maybe they recognize the, the face but they don't know the names this is a this is a kind of disease for for me looking at it so we need to really get out of from this. Try to make friends, try to find other people, maybe try to make friends online, create a space online and come in and talk about it and like what we are doing here or create another place for, for sharing your, yourselves. It might be good, but in, offline in the society, we, you, we need to create a groups or one people, one, uh, two people, three people, four people. Otherwise, if you can't do it right now, my best choice will be going to the bush. And, and uh, these are our fellow beings. If we cannot deal with our human race, human, human beings, we can have our fellow beings other than human beings to, to have dialogue with. Or maybe also in big cities, you don't have these places. So you need to build links with the traditional society all over the world, maybe. At least I, what I can suggest, we need to have connections with other, other beings. When we don't have, that is a big problem for me. So how to challenge every individual in modern society to build society or build a relation with other person, two or three or four or five persons around them in the office. And also talk, Talk, not talk rubbish or talk cover up stories, but real stories. Uh, mostly I found people, even in meetings, in classrooms, they just say something that it's on the, on, the, on, on the cover, but they don't really say real one. So we need to be <clears throat> long, long <laughs> some, some time to learn to. One way is like listening to elders like me or other elders visiting at my place or other places, and then it will create space. But it will take time and <clears throat> more organizing. Thank you. Thank you. So here's a question from Gary about animals. Is it the way animals behave that provides the message? Or is it just their presence at certain times? Behave also send messages, but the way they behave, they might respond to other animal or spirits. When they behave strangely or when they have in a, in a different way, they might, they, our Melanesian interpretation will be some spirits around or 
other other animal are responding. That's why the, the, the animal is picking up. So they is giving response. Another one? Say it again, please. Um, or is it what if they just appear at certain times? Is that yes. the message? Yes, they will. For Gary, I know you very well, that you love animals, and they will have a particular time to tell you something. Not all the time, but they will watch your heart. They, they will watch your heart at the time you feel sad about them or you will feel something and you feel like, oh, yes, it's like me. I feel sad when I pain when I feel my, why my arm is injured. So it's the same feeling. You actually communicate with that feeling. They will speak to you. And what we normally say in Melanesia, for anything, they will respond. Any problem, anything, any plan, anything, they will respond. So animal normally wait for some time actually to talk directly, but uh, they also sense things and they respond also. But when they want to say something, they will say it at certain times, not all the times. Okay, thank you. And uh, from Florent, what about women in the tribes? So in the tribes, we have mother's house and men's house. So mother's house means children and babies and all girls sleep in mother's house. And when the, when the boys become, when the children become boys, they are rushed. Sometimes they are taken, when the mother, the boy already slept, they will take him to man's house because they are learning. But when they grow up, they will know where to sleep at the end. But we are always separated between men and women in the housing. Everything we do is transparent. Oh, you go to your wife's house. Everyone knows. And you're coming back from one day, two days. Everyone knows. So, yeah, that's a, this is one big topic that <coughs> when we are talking about energy, um, control or energy manipulation or we need this is a very good one to talk about but yes mothers have their own separate house fathers have their own separate house this is the way you control the birth or also this this is a way to control the energy otherwise men will be wasting energy all the time in the family bedroom home <laughs> so that's uh for me it's very good but it needs a separate um, <clears throat> discussion, I think. Thank well, you. yes, and yet I'm seeing another question here that's related. It says, how does nature teach you to face desire? Desire. Yes. <clears throat> because the question is, desire and nature doesn't um, it doesn't really desire is related to desire for women or if that is the case or any any desire well it's it's any desire and also yes. it's there's also a question there about fear as well from the same uh questioner so i think it's about and how nature can help with yes. that i think what nature does most of the time is it uh, filters the feeling we bring from the house. So when you go to nature, you will feel different from the, the sensations, the emotions, or anything you pick up in the house will be shifted because you are already in different uh, atmosphere or different web of energy. So when you go in there, it's animal and birds and all other beings talking or walking or building the energy. So. It will not be exactly the same feeling in the house and in the, in the nature. So sometimes we we build we make a plan, for example, and then we say, "Oh, let's go to go to gardening." We go gardening, and while thinking about the plan, desire or willingness, 
something what I want to do. When after gardening, we will go back to house, men's house, and we will uh, the elders will ask now what do you think after some such sort of, such hours in the garden, and sometimes the most of the time the the people will change their minds. Now now I think I feel like this I feel like that. So in other words, nature does respond to problems in the in body or in energy or in the feeling or. So we have time for maybe a couple more questions. This one from ID. Uh, you mentioned when an elder tells a story, only one person is cooking the message while others are listening. Why only one chef? Does the chef play a special role? Yes, chef is a, like another pair of messenger. Messenger is paired with chef. The chef is the one that picking up the message and cook it. So they have special role. In modern term now, right now, right, right in this context in New Guinea and uh, Melanesia already modernized some many parts. So in modern terms, when the uh, police come or when something happened in the court, these are the ones to go. These are the people who normally, they know how to speak. They know to how to argue, but also they know how to cook the message. They, they will pick up messages very clearly. They they might prepare something in the house that they might end up saying something else in the in the courtroom, something like this. So it's because we want, as as I said in the house, the last the last video clip you see, there's only one gate entrance, one for animal, one for humans, and then when you go to the house, only also one gate, no window, only one door, that represents everything is going in and out very clear. So repeat the question again. Um, the question is, was about uh, why only one? Yes, uh, so everything is one, you see? Everything is one, gate one, the, the entrance is one, everything is one, the, the messenger is one, the cook is one, the elder is one. So everything is one, but they are paired. They are paired among other elders. So also because we don't want to, um, we this these elders, like I am, I am a messenger. When I another one to replace me, only when I die, not when I am still alive. So a cook, a cook, a chef, also the same. We don't want to have another cook, another cook. So a lot of cooking plates and cooking pan create a different taste different outcome so we want to keep it same same thing same outcome and we want to keep it pure this is why we always say when many people talking we say please quiet but these guys these quiet ones they can discuss the message outside the talk outside the men's house when they go to garden oh you said this i thought about this they can discuss but then not in their actual men's house talking because everyone wants to keep it uh, in order and uh, filter everything so that the message is not going around wild or uh, like this. Thank you. So we are running out of time and I hope everyone is okay to just go over by a few minutes because there's one final question that I think is, is a, a good one to end on and it comes from Fla uh, Clarence. And he says, what is your message now for Hong Kong friends? Yes. Yes, I, I, as I have said before, I will repeat it again. I, uh, <clears throat> I will repeat it so that, yes, I have said to uh, my friends in Hong Kong and other Places that yes, we it is time now. We human beings need to realize that we are clever. We can go to the moon and uh, other 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 galaxies or, or or other planets, but we are still humans, and we are nature. We are part of nature, and we are nature. We need to realize this, and then next one we need to appreciate, accept the reality that these other beings, other than humans, they do send messages. They are not just, oh, I'm, I'm scared of this. 
uh, uh, ants, I'm scared of a butterfly or lizard or, no, we need to respect them. We need to really now behave. We need to, as I said, we need to upgrade our, our being system so that we see other beings as fellow beings. And then next one will be, will be, we need to create spaces or place so that we can have spaces on place to, to cook the messages because we are really busy with our mobile phone and computer and, and we don't really look at each other. We don't even on the bus and on the, on the train, we don't really say hello to everyone. We, maybe we are scared. We need to really, now we need to create rooms. The easy one will be room on the, on the, on the internet or online room, online house. That's something that uh, physically we can do, but primarily we need to realize now that as human beings, we have other beings as a fellow beings and they do have messages for us. Um, by doing this, I'm expecting, uh, because I know very well Hong Kong people and I'm coming many times and you have helped me so much to, to exist, exist, understand the world very well. So now I, I invite you to really come back. If you do have time to come to Breathwork, if you, I invite you to join. And if you have to do vigil or someone is leading the vigil, please do join. I, I'm, I'm really, when the Kaduri Earth program is well established, I, I do really want Hong Kong as, you know, Hong Kong, London, these are a very important hub for human beings on this planet Earth. So Hong Kong needs to, to do something to change the whole landscape or the whole, or the whole thing happening in the, whole, in the whole planet as a financial hub, as, a, as a, something happening in Hong Kong, it will change, affect Melanesia even. So I expect uh, Hong Kong people to see this life in the way I have mentioned just now. And then it will affect other humans in Melanesia in particular, because we are, we are very close. And also other, other part of the world, like Hong Kong, like uh, London, like New York, we need to see ch changes in, in, in us human beings happening in order that we can uh, move on. Thank you. Thank you, John. And we are blessed in Hong Kong with amazing biodiversity, amazing variety of other beings. And I want to acknowledge everyone uh, tuning in from other countries where I'm sure you also have ac uh, access to many other beings. And thank you for this final message, especially because I know that when I remember that other beings are part of my family, my heart expands. I feel so happy. I don't feel so isolated, which is what can happen as a human being <laughs> if you don't realize what you're part of. Um, thank you very much, uh, John, for sharing your wisdom wow. and your, wow. your love wow. and presence. Wow. Wow. Um, I invite you to come to visit the farm again and visit Hong Kong. Um, I invite everybody to come and visit Kaduri Farm and spend time maybe on the mountaintop. You can see in the picture behind me, Kuan Yam Shan, and you can come and you can meet <coughs> beings and, and cook the messages you receive from them. Yes. And we hope to be running uh, yes. retreats again soon, uh, re uh, the COVID relations are relaxing. We hope to have residential retreats, we hope to run breathworks, we hope to have John back in Hong Kong so you can engage and ask questions and we're not limited to this uh, Zoom technology. Um, that said, I want to thank the spirits for allowing John to speak and allowing wow, us wow, to hear wow, him. Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow, wow. And all the ancestors that John invoked at the beginning of the talk. Uh, and yes, our mountain on, on Kuduri Farm is Kun Yam Shan. And today is actually a, a Kun Yam Festival Day uh in 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 the calendar of wow thank you so it's quite uh significant that we get to hear from john there are lots of, of questions we haven't managed to answer all of them but what i'm going to suggest is that we 
send John a list of outstanding questions and he can see what else he might want to address and then we can share that uh, with the group. Um, and uh, I want to thank uh, the uh, Kuduri Farm staff, the education team, um, and uh, the translators, especially the guest translators, for all your hard work to make this possible. I want to thank each one of you participants uh, and for your donations as well, which will be put to good use to protect other beings. Uh, we will be sending a questionnaire around, which we would love for you to fill in to help us to improve uh, the delivery of our talks on our Kuduri Earth program. Uh, this talk will be available on uh, the social media channels of, of KFPG with subtitles. Uh, so you can share this with your friends. Um, I want to thank all of you who've attended all our talks uh, this year. You can see a slide uh, listed with our speakers. Um, and I want to let you know that we have great speakers lined up also for next year. So stay tuned to our website, Facebook, Instagram for messages about our speakers next year. <laughs> and Finally, I want to wish everyone a very happy holiday season with Christmas coming up and the Gregorian New Year um, and other festivals. And, um, and I will give the final word to John. Thank you very much. Wa, 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 wa. I need one Thank you, everyone.